morning. Glad to see you all. Welcome to church today. It's the first day of fall. So it's awesome that it's getting cooler. We're so glad you're here. Join us for worship at Arlington Baptist Church. Let's all stand. Will you join me with the choir and just sing out to the Lord as we start off our worship service. Hit number four or five if you need it. Words will be on the screen. Sing it out tonight or this morning. I'm on uh, California time. So it's good to see us. Sing it out on that first verse. Crown with many crowns. Crown him with many crowns. The splendor of the king, clothed in majesty. How great is our God. Sing it on that first.
Heavenly Father, we come before you today, a very grateful people for all that you do, how great you are. We see it every day. We know it. The fact that we got up this morning and breathed your air that you created is amazing. The fact that you bring us into your house, to your local church that you've established, shows once again how great you are. You give us peace each day, how great you are. You give us joy in the midst of difficulties that we may face, how great you are. You give us salvation in spite of all our sin, how great you are. We love you so much. We're thankful for your son who died, was buried, and rose again. And I'm thankful for the fact that Jesus could come today. He could break through the clouds and come and take his bride away. How wonderful that is. I, I guess we just say it one more time, how great you are. So good to be in your house. Teach us things today. Bless each person that's here, each child that's here back in the children's church, those watching by way of internet. Let every one of us come and say how great our God is. But Father, if there's someone that doesn't know Christ as their personal Savior, may this be the day of salvation. May the heart of someone that might just need encouragement today, may this be the day that they'll find that encouragement in you. For those that may have this week drifted away from the things that you've asked them to do, Draw all them near to you. <clears throat> Pray the Father today would be a day of reckoning for that and that they would understand the need to follow you wholly with everything that you've given us. You're a great God and we love you so much. Now use this service for your honor and glory. For Christ's sake, amen. Boy, it's good to see you today. It's a wonderful day, isn't it? Ah, oh, three of you think so. Isn't it a wonderful day? It's not raining in here. Give it time might but right now it's good all right i know it's rainy outside but you being here makes it bright here and we're glad you're here in god's house and if you're visiting today we're so thrilled to have you it's always a privilege to have guests and visitors with us and if you're visiting today welcome we're glad that you're here and the ushers are coming down the aisle they want to give all of our guests and visitors something today so if you are visiting if you'll put your hand up wherever you're at i know we have folks visiting right down here from florida and uh they brought the rain so we'll blame them huh now, but if you're visiting today, put your hand up wherever you're at. The ushers will see you and give you something. We're so thrilled that you're here. And I hope when you sit down in a moment, you'll take a moment, fill that card out, drop it in the offering plate when it comes by. You can keep everything else to remind you of your visit here at Arlington. And, uh, but it's been a great day that God's given to us. And just singing his praises brightens us up, doesn't it? It really does. So good to see you. We'll let you be seated, and we'll hear from the choir.
cross. Are you thankful for the cross today? Amen. All right, let's stand up. Let's continue singing about our beautiful Savior. Let's worship him in the beauty of his holiness this morning. Behold our God who has held the oceans in his hands. Sing it out. Words will be on the screen. Main counsel to the Lord who can question any of his words as we continue singing this morning. Who has given counsel to the Lord? that last verse.
o'clock, we'll have our service down the chapel as we normally do. I hope you'll be with us. Uh, I'll be doing the fourth message in this series of messages going, Having Done All Stand. And uh, man, the Lord has really used that in our church. And I hope you'll be with us tonight. And uh, we'll go on to the next part of that and finish it up next week. But be with us tonight. And then don't forget Wednesday night that uh, we're looking forward to a great service Wednesday night and uh, continue on that series. I'm doing with the plan of God. I'll do with the millennial reign. Of course, we have Awana at 630. We have the teens at 630. And let me say this. Listen to me. We were so close to the 200 mark on Wednesday night. We were just a few off, just like 195. And you, you could have helped us. All right. So, I mean, we're just seeing the Lord bless in our Awana, the Lord bless in our faith works for teens. Oh, do we have 26 teenagers? I think 26 on Wednesday night. I mean, just the Lord's blessing. And, uh, and then the adults. And so, I, I don't know why you'd want to miss. Brother Whitehead, why would anyone want to miss on Wednesday night? I don't know either. So be with us on Wednesday night. And uh, we're going to have a great time. And uh, we look forward to it. So anyways, you know about it. And we're looking forward to it coming up. And then also, uh, don't forget, deacons will meet with you Tuesday night, 6 o'clock. Don't forget about that. And also, uh, next Sunday. Oh, we got to talk about next Sunday, International Sunday. Uh, I guarantee one of my favorite Sundays of the year. I love International Sunday, and uh, we'll have a great time on that. And don't forget a few things about that. First of all, we'll have a very special service, got some special things planned in it as we celebrate as all the nations of the world that we have that are in our church. And, uh, and listen, dress in some of that attire that way. I, I, don't, I won't wear a tie next Sunday. I don't know what I'll wear. I don't know what nation I'll go by next year, week, but I'm ready for it. So I encourage you to do that. Dress that way if you want to. That's great. Cultural attire. I think that's wonderful. And then, of course, we have our meal afterward. And I want to encourage you to sign up for that and then bring a couple dishes for that. We do that over in the high school gym. It's a great event, and everybody's invited. Whatever you bring, we eat. All right? So it's going to be great. Now, a few things about that. Let me encourage you with this. First of all, bring those dishes before church or before Sunday school. You can bring them over to the, to the high school gym, and there are folks there to meet you and help you with that. And I encourage you, uh, encourage the dishes that you bring that are meant to be hot. Bring those in a hot pot or crock pot, something like that, you know, because we won't be able to keep it hot if not. So make sure you do that. And then label all your serving utensils, label your pot, your plates, and then and we'll probably have you over there label what you brought. <laughs> That helps us, all right? And, uh, but it's going to be a great time. I want everybody to come. Everybody at church needs to come. Let's fill that gym up and just have a wonderful time uh, being uh, with a great dinner with everybody together. So we'll do that next Sunday, and you can bring all that food over there. And once again, over to the high school gym before. You can bring it before the Bible study time at 10 o'clock or before the service at 11, or we'll take it over right afterward, whatever. But there will be people there to help you, and we look forward to that. And we want to ask you to sign up just so we make sure we have enough tables set up and everything. So just go by the Welcome Center afterward and do that. And it's going to be a great service. You don't want to miss that. And then also, let me mention to you about the uh, uh, walkathon and the golf tournament for our school that's coming up October 12th. Just a word about that uh, golf tournament. That is on Friday uh, morning of October 12th. And uh, we're actually looking for sponsors that will sponsor that, like a business that would do that. If, if a business will sponsor, what we'll do is they will be able to have their, their name put at that hole, be on a sign. They'll be able to give any information that they want to the golfers. And we've already got a number of companies doing that. You may want to do as an individual. Uh, but there, all this information is laid out in this brochure. And it's all at the Welcome Center. And I want to encourage you to do that. Help us with that. And then we need golfers on that day also. And uh, that uh, price that includes the golf, includes lunch. And it is going to be a wonderful time as we're raising money for a new bus for the school. And so I hope that you'll help us with that. And uh, maybe you know some businesses. Maybe you have a business yourself. Or maybe you're an individual that says, you know what, I could help with that and sponsor a whole. That would be a real blessing. If you have any questions, any one of these men up here can help you. All right? And uh, so make sure that you do that and get the information and help us with that and then sign up and play golf with us that day it'll be a wonderful time it's best ball tournament so that means you're playing the best ball out of every group it's a lot of fun good fellowship and, and a wonderful time so remember that's coming up on october the 12th all right and everything else a lot of things in the bulletin you'll get there i'll mention the uh missions conference in a moment but guys if you'll come let's receive the offering now and I'm thankful that we have a God who loves us so much and that wants us to be always faithful in our tithes and offerings. So make sure that we are. All right, Brother Whitehead, if you would, would you come and pray for this offering today? Let us pray. 
Thank you, Lord. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before you today to give praise, honor, and glory to you. Lord, we do thank you that this is a time to rejoice, Lord God, just to rejoice in our giving as we give back to you that which you have given unto us, Lord. We pray that it will be used for the furtherance of your kingdom. Bless it now in Jesus' name we pray and ask these things. Amen and amen. Just say a word about our missions conference that's coming up, and then we'll show you something on the screen here in just a moment. Our missions conference comes at October the 3rd, so we're coming very quickly, just a week from this Wednesday night. And our theme is Send the Light. It will run Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, and all day on Sunday the 7th. All right. So it's going to be a tremendous time. We have some wonderful missionaries that are coming, guest preacher that will be here. Our, our theme, once again, being Send the Light. I, I cannot stress enough the need for us. In this day and age, to be ready to reach the lost both here and around the world. It, it, it is the cause of Christ. It's the heartbeat of God is reaching others, wherever it is around the world. And a missions conference is where church gathers together, where we can come together and, and rally around the fact of world missions. We have a unique church here in the fact that we have folks that come from all over the world. And now we have an opportunity for God to challenge our hearts and so I want you to make sure you set aside that time, all right? Be with us on Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, Thursday night, 7 o'clock, Friday night, 7 o'clock, and then all day on that Sunday. On Friday night, to help you, because I know some work and all that, to, to help you on that, we're going to have a spaghetti dinner at uh, 6 o'clock on that Friday night. And all you have to do is sign up for it. You don't have to bring anything. Just come. We'll feed you. All right? You can, you can eat and then go to the service. You can't eat and go home, but you can eat and go to the service. All right? And uh, it's going to be a tremendous event. We have some wonderful missionaries, just some tremendous missionaries. Matter of fact, of the three missionaries we have coming, two we already support. And uh, one you'll see on the screen here in a moment. And, uh, but the Millikans uh, in Mexico, the Burns in Norway will be with us. The Mead family in Senegal will be with us. And then our guest preacher is a good friend of mine, Pastor Ricardo Lees from Nassau, Bahamas. And so I, I wanted you to hear from them. All right? We got to show you one before, but uh, got a couple that I want to show you now. Because, listen, when you come to the missions conference, you say, will I be encouraged? I guarantee it. But second of all, you will encourage them. You being here will encourage every missionary. 
And so I want to encourage you with that. So I want them to give a little invitation to you about coming. And so we'll run these. First of all, we'll, we'll show you, uh, which is the first one? The Millicans, all right? The Millicans will be on here. They take this for us. They're from Mexico, and they'll, you'll see them in a moment. And then following that, Pastor Ricardo Lees and his wife, June, will be inviting us also to the conference. You enjoy that, and after that, we'll have our special music. Hello, we're Marsh and Joy Millican with Ethnos 360, formerly known as New Tribes Mission, founded in 1942. Ethnos 360 has the goal to reach and to plant mature churches among indigenous people groups around the world. Our part of the world is the country of Mexico, where we worked among the Tarumara Indians. Although the Tarumara live in Mexico, they have their own language, their own culture, their own spiritual beliefs, and in a way live in their own world. They are, live high in the mountains and are isolated from most of the society. We, along with a team of missionaries, had the privilege to see God do miracle after miracle to see a vibrant church planted among the Tatamata. After this, for many years, Marsh was the field chairman, and he and a team of men and women had the oversight of 70 missionary families and all aspects of the mission work, from the legalities of dealing with the Mexican government to the planting of churches among the tribal groups. Currently, we're part of a missionary team working with Spanish-speaking Christians from Mexico, Central America, and South America to help them reach out to these indigenous groups around the world and to plant churches amongst them. We look forward to being with you soon and sharing the wonderful things that the Lord is doing. See you soon. I'm the pastor of Liberty Baptist Church. This is my wife, Joan Lees. And we've been married now for 33 and a half years. We have two children, Ricardo Jr. and Crystal. And they both are married. And we've been serving the Lord for many, many years. Uh, we have been saved as a result of a missionary by the name of T.J. and Tom Tilly. They came to the Bahamas and started the work and we got saved through their ministry. And we are the products of missions. We love missions. And we're looking forward to being with you on October, October the 3rd to the 5th uh, and serving in uh, the mission conference and asking the Lord to bless. And we hope that God will stir your hearts toward missions. We'll be praying. I'm looking forward to fellowship with my dear friend, Dr. Mark Campbell and his wife, April. And we're looking forward to fellowship. They've been a great inspiration to our ministry for many, many years. And we say praise the Lord for them. Thank you for the invitation to be able to come to be a part of the mission conference. And we trust that God will continue to bless you. We're looking forward to a great time during the mission conference. May God bless you. Christ alone will I glory, for I could pride myself in battles won. For I've been blessed beyond measure, and by His strength alone I overcome. Oh, I could tell and count successes like diamonds in my hand. But my trophies could not equal to the grace by which I stand. In Christ alone, I place my trust and find the glory in the power of the cross. In every victory, let it be said of me source of strength, my source of hope is Christ alone. In Christ alone will I glory, for only by His grace I am redeemed. And only His tender mercies could reach beyond my weakness to my need. Now I seek no greater honor than just to know Him more and 
to count my gains but losses to the glory of my Lord. In Christ the Lord, I place my trust and find my glory in the power of the cross. In every victory, let it be said of me, my source of strength. Source of hope is Christ alone. I place my trust and find my glory in the power of the cross. In every victory, let it be said of me, my source of strength, my source of is Christ alone my source of strength my source of hope is Christ alone in Christ so much brother fernandez wonderful wonderful song open your bibles to luke chapter number five luke chapter number five i hope you enjoyed those videos and looking forward to uh that conference coming up uh once again you will love pastor lee's brother ricardo has been such a friend for many years and a great preacher and uh has built a wonderful church there in nassau at liberty baptist church you'll enjoy him so much uh sometimes when he and i talk he kicks into that bahamian so if he kicks into that i'll have uh uh, well, Brother Bob Jerome, you, you're close enough. You can interpret and uh, help us with that. But uh, no, he'll be a blessing to you. And these missionaries will be also. And so I hope that you'll be here for that and make much of it. Luke chapter number five. I, I always loved the account of Luke chapter number five. And uh, l let me explain something to you before I read the passage, just so that you understand this. Sometimes I think we have this idea that when we come, uh, you know, like with, with young people, that they're educated during the week and then they come to church for spiritual. Uh, and I, I agree with that. And I understand where that comes from. But listen to me now. I want, I want to just say something. Whenever we come to these accounts that we have in the Word of God, they are fully inspired and fully true. What I mean by that is this, and let me pull all this together. We don't educate our children during the week as if to say when you come to Sunday, it's something different. The education that they get in God's house is just as critical as they get in the schoolhouse. I'll say it one more time because I didn't get a full amen, just a partial amen. But it's right. All right. The education that young people get is just as critical what they get in the church house as what they get in the schoolhouse. So the point is when we come to these accounts of Scripture, it's almost as if sometimes we have this idea that, well, you know, this is one thing and that is another. And as if to say that there's, there, this is one is more valuable than the other. That is not the case. And so whenever we come to these accounts from the Word of God, I don't want us just to say the word story because sometimes uh, young people get this in their idea, in their mind. Okay, that's just a story as if it's not true. It's true. It's in the Word of God. All right, so, so we understand that. That is nowhere on my notes, so we needed it. All right, notice Luke chapter number 5, verse number 1. It came to pass that as the people pressed upon him, him being Jesus, to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he sent unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draught. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night, have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net break, and they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship. They should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships, so that they began to sink. Simon Peter saw it. He fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him at the draught of, fish, of the fishes which they had taken. 
And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. This message is entitled today, Six Words That Can Change Your Life. They say, well, my life doesn't need change. Oh, yes, it does. If you're like me, a lot of things in my life need change. Six words that can change your life. I love this account from the Word of God. This account, when I read it, I always marvel at this passage over two things in particular. Let me just show you before I really get into the message. First of all, I marvel at the power of Christ, don't you? I marvel at what he does. I marvel the fact of, that he comes out and performs this uh, absolutely phenomenal miracle. I marvel at the power of Christ. It is so evidently seen in this passage. I also marvel at this passage over his concern for the individual. Often you'll find in the Lord Jesus Christ will be around this incredible crowd, the beast crowd around him, but yet it, he will turn from the crowd and deal with an individual. He does it all the time. He does it here. He does it with a crowd, with a woman who had the issue of blood. He did it with uh, uh, Jairus' daughter uh, who had just died. I mean, he does it all the time. He will turn and yet deal with the individual. I, I marvel at that. I, I love the fact that the Lord Jesus Christ always took time to help people personally. And we ought to be the same way. I marvel at this passage when I see that. Jesus is at a place called the Lake of Gennesaret. You may say, well, what is that?